Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, back with another Capture One video. And today I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks inside of Capture One and some uh, little features that you may not know about um, and kind of go through them quickly so, so you can kind of judge for yourself what you think. Okay, for the first image here, I'm going to show you the color, uh, direct color manipulation. Uh, so you hit D on your keyboard and it will bring up this tool. And then wherever you click, uh, let's see, you click on like this blue area here. You can take that blue, if you push up, it will saturate it. If you pull down, it'll desaturate it. If you push to the right, it will push it that way on the color wheel. If you push it this way, it'll push it that way in the color wheel. Uh, so it's a pretty easy way to go and quickly kind of adjust bits of an image. And you can just continue to click around and uh, move through uh, the entire image. Just it, it is not working selectively, by the way. It is working globally but it's taking the color you're sampling and working with that first and foremost. So if you want to see what this is doing, you can actually go into the color editor here. And what we're doing is playing with this panel, but it's using this tool. And this tool is one of those that I never bothered clicking on before. And I typically don't use this palette. I prefer to do everything with the color balance tool, but this is kind of a cool little tool. And uh, I thought it was pretty interesting and worth covering. Obviously to reset everything, just use this tool here and that will bring the editor back to normal. For the next tip, let's take a look at the lens correction dialog. And in here, you'll see that there's an extra curve. Now I'm using a Sony a7R 3 and you'll see that I have it set to film extra shadow. This is not the default. The default is typically auto, but I find extra shadow really helps to bring in the bottom part of the image. And uh, note that when you're shooting, obviously the darker parts of the image or the darkest parts of the exposure are where the least amount of data is stored. And uh, what I mean by that, in case you did not know that, Let's take the curve here and give you a quick example of how data is broken down inside of your camera. And this is all digital cameras, by the way. Half of your image data is stored in this stop here. That's what these lines are, these are stops. So half of your image data is stored here, a quarter is here, an eighth is here, and a sixteenth is here. So obviously if you have uh, an image with mostly dark areas of an image, it's going to be a lot more grainy because there's not as much data stored at the dark end of the histogram. That's why they only say push to the right, meaning you want to try and get your exposure as close to this edge as possible without touching it, obviously, because you're going to clip. Uh, so always try and push it as far as you can. Now, if you uh, hover over skin, uh, most Caucasian skin, when it's finally said and done, should be about one stop over 18% gray, which is the middle line. So ideally her skin would end up here. So we can put our cursor there and see that we are a bit bright but that's fine. We can just go and do some exposure correction and bring the exposure down a little bit until we're happy. There we go. Well, there we go. Better. On an average, it's fine. Now, another thing to keep track of in here, and this is where the tip is, is this exposure evaluation. So a lot of people may look at this and go, wow, this uh, default exposure is really bright. Like if I just reset all these tools here so you can see the original, this is the straight out of camera image. And it may look too bright to you. And if we take a look at the exposure evaluation tool, it shows us how efficient we were at capturing the image with the sensor. And you can see we are a little actually under ideal. We could have pushed this a little bit further, but that skin is still fine. Like if we take exposure and pull it all the way down, you'll see we have nothing that is blown out. So we can always go back and we can darken the image as we would like. But remember when we talked about capturing the data and how much we put in each one of these zones, by capturing it on the brighter side or pushed to the right side of the histogram, we actually got a much cleaner image than we would have had we exposed it like this to begin with. And then maybe we even lose some of the corners and they'd be really grainy. So remember to take a look at your exposure evaluation tool and see how you're doing as a photographer. Are you underexposing your images and not really filling the gas tank of the camera per se? Uh, so this is not only just a tip for Capture One, but in general as a photographer, always try and push your histogram to the right. Okay, for my next tip, I want to talk about the loop tool. So the loop tool can be accessed up here and you simply just use it to take a look at closer areas of an image without having to zoom all the way in. Now you can click and hold and you can change the size of the loop. And I usually use medium and you can change how much you want the loop to zoom at 100%. Now the tip is that you can actually use this over thumbnails down below as well. So if you click and hold control space bar to bring up the loop, you can actually use the loop over here by clicking control space bar and then hovering over parts of the image that you would like to see larger. 
So this is a really cool way to kind of go through and look at your images and uh, zoom all the way in. Okay, for the next tip here, let's talk about the color balance tool. Now, normally you would use this by moving the color around to adjust the image so that you like the the overall, the shadow, the midtone, the highlight, and so on. However, you can actually go into the shadow and without picking any color, you can actually increase the shadow by just moving this. Same with the midtone and the same with the highlight. But this is a pretty interesting way to raise, say, just the shadows without introducing a color cast, but to also introduce a color cast at the same time. It's a pretty efficient tool. So rather than using one to kind of increase the shadow and then another one to increase the, or to, to add a color cast, you can do them both with the same tool. But I think the interesting takeaway here is that you can actually adjust this without having to introduce a color cast. Okay, for the next tip here, let's talk about masks. So I've hit B for brush and M for mask. You can see me drawing a mask around, say, the parts of the image that I want to, let's say, introduce a clarity to. So you can go through and highlight that area. Now, rather than going through and try and scribble and figure in the inside of this entire mask, you can actually just do the perimeter Go up to this menu here and choose fill mask and it will fill in the parts that are inside of the area you've already highlighted this can save you a lot of time if you're trying to do something to an image and rather than trying to go through and fill it manually by scribbling back and forth you can just do this and then choose fill mask and it will fill in the blanks okay this last tip is uh, kind of based on my process recipe and uh, i have different recipes depending on where i'm going to sort the resulting jpeg the JPEGs don't go back into Capture One. They're pushed into Dropbox where they can be used and then discarded. I can always regenerate the JPEG later, so I don't save them. So in this case, I have a client export and I'm pushing out the full size printable image. And uh, I have mine set to use the subfolder job identifier, and then I'll create another subfolder called printable and another subfolder called full size. So basically it's gonna put it in Dropbox under client. You can see here the job identifier is Linaria. So it'll be clients, Linaria, printable, full size, and then it'll drop this file in there. So what you can do here is you can actually modify the job identifier. Let's say we're going to do in-person sales. We can put a backslash in-person sales. Now when it creates the directory, it'll create clients, Linaria, IPS, printable, full size. So you can quickly insert directories by simply changing the name here. If you're using a token like I am here, is a quick and easy way to add subdirectories. So I have a couple magazines that I write for. And what I do is I put the magazine name, a backslash, and the name of that specific client. So it puts it in the magazine folder each time and then creates a subfolder for each client. That way I don't have to remember which folder does it go in and which client does it belong to because it belongs to each and every image inside of Capture One. Okay, this next tip is for people that have multiple sessions and maybe you're shooting the same client on multiple days. Now I use a different session for each time I shoot them but perhaps I want to kind of combine them and look at both sessions at once, which can be confusing. What you can do is you can actually create session favorites, which allow you to link any directory anywhere on any hard drive to the session for reference use. So uh, kind of look at it like a quick way to get to a directory elsewhere in your computer for reference. So for example, here is a picture of Jennifer and she's wearing a dress by a designer. Um, I can click on the plus sign here and go and grab a favorite. And I'm gonna grab, I know where these go. I'm just gonna grab the output from this Capture One session and hit select folder. And it's gonna add it as an output session favorite here. So I can click on this and you can see that now I can see other, other images from this dress that were shot on a different day. So I can do this with many different images or many different sessions if I know that I'm gonna to want to reference images from previous shoots. So this is a quick and easy way to kind of do that without creating a catalog or maybe taking your sessions and compiling them all together. I've done that before where I've taken a session, I'll uh, say I have a high school senior and I shoot them multiple times. I may create one session for that senior and then put all the images in that single session. Uh, but I find that if I keep the session separate, it's a lot easier for me to find the images I want. And by using session favorites, I can make sure that if I have a look and feel that I want to be consistent, I can do it this way. But it gives you some options either way. So if you like this video, please take a moment and actually click on the like button. I would I really appreciate that. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought. I know some of these are ones you've probably seen before or already knew, but hopefully you walked away with some little tidbit that will help you out in Capture One. Until next time, take care and take, take care of yourself during this time. It's a little weird uh, during the COVID-19 quarantine. So uh, everybody stay safe.